Hello, this is the Beckstein Model 7 upright piano just coming to stock. It's in our storage area, 141 centimetres tall at the moment, but that should be more like 137. So let's look at that first. The casters have got shepherd casters. I mentioned this recently on another piano. Um, so the, the casters are far too high. Uh, they're six centimetres from there to there, and there should be three, roughly. I've checked to the Beckstein another Beckstein to see what the height normally is, which means the pedals is 10.5 centimetres tall, far too tall, uh, so it's very uncomfortable to play with your foot, is at too much of an angle here, and often wears on the end, they often wear on the end of Beckstein pedals anyway. This is an indication it's not been used too much because that would have worn, or certainly not with these Shepherd casters on. So that's work that needs doing. The casework on the piano, a little bit the worse for wear. You can see down the bottom there, here. Um, love to repolish this piano. It's a lovely rosewood underneath it. So that comes out extraordinarily well when it's repolished. This is 1913, so uh, the rosewood's not quite as big as, uh, as slightly older ones. Here's a Backstein Model 9. I think this is about 1904. And uh, you can see it's much more figured. In other words, um, there's more pattern to the rosewood. Uh, this one's been fully repolished. An example of what the other one could look like if you wanted it done. Let's have a look around the generally. So the sides are not too bad, although the bottom of the other one is definitely marked with probably a removal mark. And you can see how the fade lines come because of the music stand here. And the music stand itself is in reasonable condition. This could obviously be improved a lot with maybe a couple of days work but uh, to be fully repolished would be ideal french polishing takes about 60 hours so that's very time consuming uh, but a tremendous result at the end of the day now the key tops are perfect ivory i've uh, cleaned them but they still need buffing i don't know if you can tell from that but they're not shiny well they'll track the dirt if they're not shiny uh, they were far dirtier than this when they came in but they're still dirty as you can tell so well if we're going to buff them we won't uh, obviously do any more at the moment but um in perfect condition and none of them have come, been come off and been stuck back on which you can always tell by a stronger line here. Interested to see this Soul Agents Hopkinson's Successors Limited Leeds. I've seen this before I think. Hopkinson was a very high quality piano manufacturer. In fact I had a Hopkinson in my house in, in preference to other German uprights at one stage. Beautiful manufacturer. Some of the pianos obviously they vary a bit but the top pianos are of very high quality. Now zeroing in on the inside of the piano, it's in extremely good condition, not been used too much. So for the Model 7 there, we're so grateful whenever we get one of these in because it's one of Beckstein's best and found them in recording studios quite often. Uh, very suitable, they do make a, a very rich tone. So we'll listen to it in a second. Hammers, where we're always looking at this and, and also the spacing of the hammers to see if uh, any of them are loose, but none of them are loose, which is very encouraging. Um, but there's a reasonable amount of wear on the tips here. So I've refaced a couple of them to try and see what difference it makes to tone. Let's see if you can hear the difference in tone. And so let's try this uh, F first of all. There's not a huge difference actually. I expected more. Um, maybe we can make it slightly more pointed, but uh, just taking the top surface off, it's not really taking much of the hammer off there's still plenty of felt there and the top end is plenty of felt there that's very important to check so um they've been used but not overused so we just need to refine them reface them and, and voice them this is going to be soft sounding anyway let's have a listen to it and compare it with another piano in a minute i'll, I'll close it up first though so you hear what it would normally sound like the one or two strings have been replaced in the past that one there but it's a good replacement <laughs> And in fact, the pitch is 441, A441, which is, means it's been tuned regularly. Surprising considering the outside is so, um, uh, is, is not too good condition, but the piano has been kept in tune. And uh, general regulation of the dampers here, they're coming off about halfway, but they're actually lifting off too much with the pedal. If I press the pedal down, they're coming too far. That means the spring, springs are going to wear more than they need to. They need to just come that far. So we're going to have to try and uh, work on that to get that right. But otherwise, the regulation is very good indeed. By the way, the Beckstein uh, has uh, models, um, uh, let me think, models eight, seven, six. They all have this extra spring here. Um, I'll just turn the light on. 
So they have this extra repetition spring here. Forex, uh, the new Forex have got a special system on their one, two, three, which is trying to get the jack to go under quicker. Um, works well, actually. Does does seem to work extremely well, just as the new Forex do. So just pushing the jack under a little bit faster to get a faster repetition. Mm -hmm. Try and copy a grand piano repetition as much as you can, and it does work well. It does mean that the uh, the hammers need to set, uh, the checks need to be later. Generally, we find when we regulate it. So if we look at how how late that's checking, that, in other words, this check here needs to be coming off quite quite late. Uh, sorry, catching and still holding it quite close to the string. So much closer than checks normally are. They're about five eighths of an inch, and these are. As close as you can get for comfort normally works very, very well on these. So you do get wonderful repetition. So before listening to the piano, here's the summary on the chip worksheet that we've I've looked I've made today. Um so just you can have a quick look at that, I'll linger on a bit so you can stop the video if you want to. Um now some of the main factors here, lubrication. I didn't mention that earlier, but if you look at the touch weight, we've done this so often, so I won't linger on this either, but uh, touch weight's so high, in other words, putting a weight on the key, uh, that's, it'll see a 63, should be, well, 48, 52 is acceptable, really, maybe a little bit more, but not 63, which makes it feel far too heavy, uh, and it's because it needs lubricating, so if I lift the key up, but I don't lift the key here on ivories, you might pull the ivory off, lift the key on the sides, and you can see it stays up, that definitely needs lubricating, and that will bring it down probably about five grams, and then we might need to reweight. Well, actually, I forgot to mention, there are lots of hinges on, on these tall uprights that need lubricating too, so that needs doing hammers and uh, other hinges on the prolongs. So, um, that lubrication will, will bring the weight down considerably and probably mean that we don't have to touch weight. We try to make pianos like new pianos, I've mentioned before many times. Uh, so there's some other things that we've got to check. Um, so that, that'll do for that, I think. I'll, I'll just play the piano so you can have a listen. I did meant to mention there are two numbers on Beckstein uprights as well as grands of this age. So that number was on the soundboard. And on grands, very often you people give me the number that's on the, underneath the piano which uh, is a multi you have to multiply that to get the proper serial number, which is often not on the grand pianos. It's sometimes not on the up uprights either when they're restored. So I'm going to compare this with Beckstein 9 and also Knight. This is not a stock piano, it's a removal in transit. See, it's lost the night name. It often happens with nights. We have to make the name. It's quite common. Otherwise, they're such superb pianos. So you see the notes are very sticky at the moment. Obviously the lubrication will sort that out. The Bexline 7 does have such a wonderfully mellow, even tone throughout, where it's most important around here in the mid treble. And warm in the tenor too. And the bass. top treble if you're in the trade and know what these numbers on the case mean that's obviously probably a shop number I'd imagine and another one on the other side presumably HS is the initials of a shop but I've no idea really it'd be lovely to know